Hello, my ceramics class. We are going to take a look at a presentation that I made. Let me pull it up here. presentation is called Contemporary Sculptural Themes in Ceramics um, and just focusing on identity and fashion, especially after your completion of um, one of your latest projects, which was the Trump Loyal shoe, which I think everyone could see that there was sort of some commentary about your shoe, how you identify it with it, and how it even can relate um, from the world of fashion um, in any regard. It doesn't have to be high fashion or low fashion. It can be street fashion. Um, that was so so fun about the shoe. What that is what is so fun about the shoe assignment, and I hope that um, I hope that this you can see the correlation to identity in this PowerPoint. So um, these are some works by Li Xiaofeng. And so this work is incredible. Um, Li Xiaofeng co somehow <laughs> collects a whole bunch of Chinese porcelain from different ancient dynasties in China, um, such as, I, I'm not sure actually of the name of the dynasties off of the top of my head, which I apologize for. But um, he doesn't create the piece from a clay form. He finds these pieces and uses a glass drill bit to carefully drill through to break up the shards um, and cut them and drills little holes and uses wire to then arrange them into these traditional Chinese dresses. Um, it's fantastic work. I would love to see it in real life just to see how he handles all of those details of um, assembling all of these pieces together. But um, there's just so much commentary in um, culture and tradition and identity and deconstructing deconstructing um, traditional fashion wear from something that is ancient and old into something new, but still resembles an ancient and old um, fashion, like kind of type of fashion icon of these uh, Chinese dresses, I think is just really a very interesting way of exploring identity, um, literally breaking it apart and putting it back together again in a way that is seamless in a way that's uh, very easily identifiable. Um, Kali Hoover is a ceramic artist that I found that um, works with ceramic slabs of clay. And, uh, you know, I don't know the backstory of like the shirt. I do think that there's something in the way that it's painted and it's glazed that this print really can, I think, you know, I think this print somehow identifies with the artist as a, a formal print that is something that is maybe reoccurring in Hoover's life. Um, there, you know, it's, it's interesting to have this conversation of um, like you are what you wear you know, you always hear that. And I think that there is, as an artist, and it's really interesting because most of the time I am um, wearing clothes that are covered with mud. And I think about how um, this is so much kind of like being perceived <laughs> by other people as um, someone who makes ceramic work can is very obvious to other people. And so I wonder, I just wonder about um, where the shirt come, comes from as, as it correlates to Hoover's identity and 
when and how often and why Hoover wore it so much. Um, as though it's a simple button up, it's pleated at the shoulders. So kind of that pleated effect by, you know, cinching that clay there is really, really cool. And I think that that, um, that makes it seem like maybe the pleatedness makes it seem like it's maybe designed as a woman's blouse. But then there's also some sort of narratives that starts to happen through the breast pockets of these eyes that are kind of coming through, um, which I think that taking this shirt, this button up collared shirt into a more mysterious or like surreal realm also talks about identity in the sense that maybe it's not so easily deconstructed. So this piece is rather beautiful and um, it's kind of a similar color palette to Li Xiaofeng in the, in the sense that these are China paints on a white clay. China paint is that inky, that inkiness that is coming out, which is really beautiful. Um, so this is another piece that um, is talking about fashion. This is a piece by Cami Climaco, who does ceramic work and always is placing it on these really interesting pedestals. Um, she is always playing with presentation quite a bit. And like, as you can see, there's a ceramic vessel here with a type of like orchid coming out of it. Um, it's, there's this, um, this type of like monumental granite pedestal that is rather long. Um, and I, I do think of this, there's a ceramic piece here, which is uh, that ruffled neck wear <laughs> with the little buttons, the colored buttons is um, something that is easily um, correlated with uh, Prince, the musician who was really big in the uh, 80s, who passed away, I think, um, like, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago. Prince the musician um, was always wearing these ruffled fabric-y things. I can't, I don't know the name of it and I apologize. I just don't know what that's called, but using the clay, the really thin slabs can create this beautiful ruffled effect. And um, the bust is oblong, like a bean sort of shape with a, with a little pedestal on its own and enclosed with this, um, or maybe it's not enclosed. I think this is like an open vessel, but translating this vessel into um, a Prince garment, I just thought was really interesting as far as Prince, even in his death, we can't escape his identity, identity being correlated with these neck ruffles, which I think is like so crazy as him existing as an icon to be, um, when you become an icon, you're so connected to um, the way people see you and your physical appearance that it's like inescapable. Like even um, like so a prince with like his jerry curl, always wearing purple. I mean, every time I think of the color purple, I think of prince too. So there are these visual aesthetics that we just, some people, um, pop icons can't escape. And um, in that way, sometimes I think of us as humans, you know, our, we don't always get to choose what we wear. Um, there might be some things that inhibit us as far as finances or um, maybe culturally we can't choose because it's a part of our cultural tradition to wear something specific, but it does correlate with our identity. And it's interesting to question identity as something that we practice on our own or is identity something that is perceived by other people onto us. So interesting to kind of um, gauge that back and forth. Um, Wan Chen Zhang is a Chinese artist. He actually was a former teacher of mine. He lives in the Bay Area and he does these larger than life figure sculptures. Um, he's really influenced by um, 
different types of Chinese war memorials where there are these, these life-size figures that exist in, in mass numbers. And so um, he, something about that imagery really stuck out to him. And that's something that he's just always investigating for every single sculpture that he does, which is larger, and li larger than life. Um, all of his figures are always wearing something um, traditionally Chinese. And it's, I think, uh, I think he explores some of that type of fashion or traditional type of fashion within his own heritage. But he also does it in a way with the clay that has a like a rough geological like withering of time sort of texture, which is really, really cool. Um, there's like little, he uses, he'll stab, you see these holes here? He just stabs his fingers just into the clay directly to, to seam pieces of clay together. And um, he uses really washy glazes to help bring out all these cracks and different, um, like I said, geological like weathering Form, form it, formations that um, appear in the way that he handles the clay, which I think is, um, it's really hard. It's, it's kind of tricky to do, um, especially because I think that there's always this like desire to really refine clay to perfection like this. And you know, there's really, there's a smoothness, there's a glossiness, everything seems really finished and refined, but to still talk about fashion and identity um, through clay, I think adds another layer layer of dialogue, um, even thinking about you know clay as it pertains to, um, like we call a clay body a body for what reason? I mean, there's some identity within that too, like from white clay to red clay to yellow clay to black clay. All of these talk about skin, like types of skin. Um, which I think can even be, that concept can be pushed a little bit into um, the world of identity and fashion um, and really, really questioned and dissected. I showed a video by Woodrow Nash. Oh yeah, I think it was, it was for um, one of your last projects. Uh, I can't remember exactly which one at the moment. I'm sorry. Anyways, Woodrow Nash he makes a ton of these figurative sculptures um, that are, he calls African Nouveau. Um, Art Nouveau was a movement that happened, I think like around World War II, like I think of Egon Schiele, um, Gustav Klimt. Um, this Art Nouveau, uh, if you care to look it up, you should, it's, it was, there was a lot of bold lines and um, there was always a use of figures. There was always like a face that you could see. And um, so Woodrow Nash, Nash has, he always uses these figures of uh, African diaspora. Um, so there's like, he'll talk about traditional um, fashion within beads and like these big earrings as well as um, using paint on the skin which was um, I think that it's it kind of funny because it does tie into like a type of African fashion but it also comes from a um, perspective of survival like I know that there is one specifically there's like one African tribe that uses red clay on their body to prevent themselves from burning in the sun. So um, there is definitely like this conversation about identity and fashion and um, all, as well as art history as it pertains to Art Nouveau where he creates these figures and glazes them with different zebra prints, adds jewelry onto them and um, stays true to his identity as a, a, a black man living in the United States who is really invested in this type of fashion that comes from his heritage. 
Um, so this is Nancy Ellen Churchville. This is a piece called Prayer Warrior. Um, I, I love that uh, the title is really funny and kind of comical. Um, she's really inspired by album covers by like Marvin Gaye and different Motown album covers like that. And um, yeah, like that's that's where her inspiration draws from is just those types of visuals that pertain to like, I guess like soul music, but interesting in the the um, where that comes from which is gospel and so this is her uh demonstrating a a figure who is wearing like a traditional sunday wear going to, going to sunday church um it's it's very i feel like it's just really sweet and really wholesome and uh there's a lot of fun within the title too but it definitely draws from her own personal identity as a as a black woman, um, probably someone who I'm assuming, you know, it's not always fair to assume, but I'm assuming someone who enjoys uh, gospel music, soul music, and probably has had some exposure in some, at some level to, um, to that faith or to that church. Um, Sherry Boyle is a total weirdo. And I, in the sense that I love it, like, I don't mean that in a bad way at all. Um, I love this work because uh, it's, she's sort of just investigating, like, sort of like a carny fashion aesthetic, um, like these old, 19, kind of like a 1930s fashion um, aesthetic that is as we see it sort of like in this black and white film of um what's that one? Oh man i can't remember there's a comedian that does all physical comedy and i keep thinking about him he does all black and white anyways i wish you are were in front of me to help me answer these questions but uh using you know like the gloves and that old timey hat and then like creating these 1930s shoes but like really abstracting the length of them um and then painting this kind of clown sad clown makeup on the face i think that there's uh this interest in that 1930s fashion aesthetic as well as um the type of comedy that was sort of around at the time which is like a lot of physical comedy um, I think is where Sherry Boyle has some sort of desire or interest in that to her that um, obviously maybe correlates with her identity a little bit and maybe she just really glorifies this time. Also, um, I just want to bring up like this use of a wig. I, I like and like also a real flower. I really like that, you know, this is all made out of ceramic um, making clay hair is a kind of a difficult thing to do or maybe even to wrap our heads around. So um, you are always welcome to use, see these real shoelaces, take real materials and correlate them into your pieces however you like from here on out. I think that is something to really um, play with and it just, it kind of takes the ceramic work out of just a traditional ceramic realm and into a, just into a different type of art, artistic fine art experience. Um, this is Christina Tufino, uh, Dancing at the End of the World is the name of this piece. And um, so she's taking this, she's really interested in mythological stories like, uh, um, I wanted to say Pandora's box, but oh, Medusa, like stories like Medusa where, where the woman is perceived as evil and be kind of becomes like a monster. And so she makes these, uh, she made these heels in this piece, these high heels, and she added in the feet too and um, added all of these strange spikes. They're kind of like, they're not really that pointy. Like I think they do kind of reside more on the monster sort of 
they look more like monsters more than they do like really spiky sharp but I think that there, there's an interesting dynamic between those kind of soft gobular spikes versus the spike of the heel which is really well done in that sense like she made them really really sharp and straight lines um she's she's from Puerto Rico uh I think that there is there's this conversation that she's creating with um uh, femininity femininity as it is practiced by uh Puerto Ricans and um really questioning <laughs> that sort of conversation of like if femininity is practiced so so extremely and so past beyond um like as far as like wearing heels or maybe even getting plastic surgery dyeing your hair wearing just tons and tons of makeup like where does femininity become where's the line between femininity and like monstrosity as she is so investigated and interested in um different icons like medusa and stuff like that so um, I really like her work too because she uses like all these matte glazes and they're always monochrome like with one color and they're they're soft they're matte um, which also gives us kind of like I want to touch it but it's sharp and I don't know it's just very feels very playful and she has a really interesting uh, world and like landscape that she creates for herself. These are works by Miriam Yusif. Um, she immigrated from Baghdad when she was younger. Um, there, these are little purses that she created, ceramic purses, and she implements um, different images from from her culture from Baghdad, like such as I, this could be some sort of pop singer. I'm not quite sure. Um, this also kind of just reminds me of Frida. So she's talking about like identifying with like maybe an artist, um, different sort of tile-like imagery of like this eye and the star. Um, this is like a little landscape probably from Baghdad from her home, which is, this is like a scroll. Um, so you, using an object, recreating an object like a purse and then implementing her different um, little scenarios from her life onto the purse speaks as, speaks to fashion identity and also her um, her transition or not her transition but her the the road and the story of her migrating immigrating from Baghdad to the United States and um, this is a piece by Gabriella Forgo. She, li she lives in LA. Um, she runs a ceramic studio called Clay CA, which I used to work for. And um, this is a piece that is using clay in that like geological sort of weathered way that I always talk about and that I like so much, but also in this way that is still like, you can still gauge and see like that there is um, some realistic imagery going on, but like the pants are just completely flat. You can see the edge of the clay along the pants. Um, there's some moments seem fairly like realistic, like the loops of the pants, and then may maybe not so much within the way that the pockets are created um, with just sort of this bra. Like she's just using sort of, she's talking about fashion and the sense that like these basic functionalities of fa fashion, like as a woman, like maybe just needing a bra and jeans, like these two kind of essentials or whatever to like get through your day. Um, but using it in the way that shows like this, like kind of rawness of the clay and like the beautiful qualities of the clay is uh, why I find this piece so intriguing. And then Christina Cordova, we watched one of her, in the Craft in American Identity episode, we watched her talking a bit about her work and her process. So we're informed a little bit more with um, how she works um, with her identity. And uh, I thought this piece was just really kind of beautiful. Um, you know, just maybe that something as simple as identifying with like beautiful aspects of nature in which she creates, she uses all these little, she creates like some roses, what looks like some leaves, 
this kind of looks like a handle of a wire tool, which could be uh, thrown in there to talk a bit more about identity as a, as a ceramic artist. And um, yeah, just creating this big, gorgeous, larger than life headpiece onto this hyper-realistic face that she makes, which is their, her figures, these realistic figures are kind of like her forte. Um, anyways, that is it as far as fashion identity and clay goes. I hope you enjoy.